or the the gas the gas prices are making the price of everything go up. And because of that, Joe Biden has this idea. Joe Biden next week, he is going to go beg the king of Saudi Arabia to pump more oil and drive the gas prices down. Now, he doesn't admit that that's what they're going to do. There's, he's not going to officially ask the king of Saudi Arabia to drive the oil prices down, but he's basically doing that. And everybody knows he's doing that. He's begging the king of Saudi Arabia to drive the oil prices down. Do what he did during the Obama years, flood the market with oil and drive those prices down. That's what that's what Joe Biden is going to Saudi Arabia to do. He is going to kiss the king of Saudi Arabia's ass. He's going to get on his knees and beg the king of Saudi Arabia, please drive the price down. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's what nobody is talking about, right? So the reason that, that we're in this situation is because we're all being told that Russia is so bad that Russia is attacking their neighbor, Ukraine. Right. We've been told that Russia is attacking their neighbor, Ukraine. That's why we have to drive them off the markets because we've tried to drive them off the markets. That's driven the price up. And so we're in this situation. So that's why we now got to go to Saudi Arabia and beg Saudi Arabia. To lower the prices. Because you can't buy gas from a country that attacks their neighbor. I mean, what Russia is doing in Ukraine, it would be almost like Saudi Arabia was attacking Yemen. Oh, wait. Saudi Arabia has been mercilessly and ruthlessly bombing and attacking their neighbor in Yemen since 2015. Thousands of civilians have died. It's one of the biggest humanitarian crises in the world. So we're being told that we have to drive Russia off the markets because of what's happening in Ukraine. And and we have to tolerate how bad it is. So now, now Biden is going to get on a plane and go beg an autocratic monarch, a king, who has mercilessly been bombing and killing civilians in Yemen since 2015. He's going to go beg the king of Saudi Arabia for more, you know, to pump the oil and, and you know, make more oil to make the price go down. I mean, if this doesn't reveal the ridiculous hypocrisy, Russia did everything they, I mean, they, they could do to try and avoid this Ukrainian intervention. They didn't want to do it. They wanted the Minsk agreement, the Minsk accords. They wanted Russia to, you know, they, they wanted Ukraine to reintegrate the Eastern regions and accept the Eastern regions as part of, part of Ukraine, um, you know, and they, they facilitated the Minsk agreements, but, you know, the Ukrainian government backed by the United States didn't recognize the Minsk agreements and Russia held off and held off and held off until finally Russia had no choice. But since 2015, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia has been invading Yemen. It has bombed Yemen. It has bombed hospitals in Yemen. It has bombed schools in Yemen. It has killed civilians in Yemen. And the USA has been supplying them with bombs and weapons and tanks and 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 uh, satellite support to tell them where to bomb. There have been Pentagon generals uh, in uh, in Riyadh advising the Saudi military on how to do it. Saudi Arabia has been ruthlessly killing their neighbors in Yemen for quite some time right now. And the USA has been giving them the guns to do it. And the UN has looked at, at what the Saudis are doing in Yemen and condemned it. And Human Rights Watch has condemned what the Saudis are doing in Yemen. The whole world is condemning what the Saudis are doing in Yemen. But the USA keeps supplying them the weapons and keeps supplying them uh, the, you know, the funding and keeps buying their oil. So the idea that we have to cut off Russia because of Ukraine. And now we're going to go beg Saudi Arabia for even more oil. I mean, it just shows you how ridiculously hypocritical it is. And I'm seeing some of the coverage of Joe Biden's upcoming trip to Saudi Arabia and U.S. media. It's very hypocritical. One of the things in, in it is they're saying that that um, that Joe Biden uh, is thinking about lifting the uh, the the restriction on arms to Saudi Arabia. Right. Well, here's the thing. The restriction on arms to Saudi Arabia is a bullshit restriction. The U Saudi Arabia is the top purchaser of U.S. made weapons, right? The USA supplies them with huge amounts of weapons. And when Joe Biden came in, he announced he was limiting it to only defensive weapons. Right. Saudi Arabia has continued to buy huge stockpiles of U.S. made weapons. But Joe Biden said he's limiting the arms sales to only defensive weapons. Now, what is the difference between a defensive gun and an offensive gun? 
What is the difference between a defensive tank and an offensive tank? What is the difference between a defensive drone and an offensive drone? It's a bullshit thing, right? The USA has been selling Saudi Arabia lots of weapons. It's just symbolic. Biden got in there. He said he was going to end the war in Yemen. That hasn't happened. And on top of that, he said that he was only going to sell Saudi Arabia defensive weapons. Well, there's no there's no difference between a defensive and an offensive weapon. So it's just it's just symbolic. But anyhow, so we got Joe Biden. He's going to go beg Saudi Arabia, a country that's been mercilessly bombing and killing their neighbors for well over half a decade, has killed thousands and thousands of people. Right. That that almost killed me. I was on a ship from Iran trying to get to Yemen with the Red Crescent Society and the the port that I was trying to reach. The port of Hodeida was bombed eight times in a single day on the day I was supposed to arrive. You can read about it, you know, about the the Iran Shahid uh, rescue ship that I was on with Iranian doctors and a German citizen and a French citizen and members of the Iranian parliament the Red Crescent Society, in 2015, May of 2015, I risked my life to try and bring aid to the people of Yemen. It created an international incident. Uh, the Israelis claimed we were smuggling weapons in, but then when we, you know, we were forced to dock our boat uh, in Djibouti, uh, and when we, you know, docked the boat in Djibouti, they unloaded the ship and they saw there were no weapons on board. We were not delivering weapons. It was a humanitarian ship from the Red Crescent Society. Um, and I was part of that international incident. It was a quite a big, uh, quite a big moment in my life. I mean, you know, it made me think about a lot of things. But, but the Saudis have been ruthlessly bombing and killing the people of Yemen, trying to reinstall their puppet, you know, leader Mansour Hadi, who was the only candidate allowed on the ballot in a sham election. Uh, they're trying to reinstall their puppet dictator in Yemen. Uh, and because of that, uh, they've been bombing and ruthlessly killing people in Yemen the whole time. And it's okay to buy oil from them. And in fact, it's even okay to send them loads of weapons. Uh, you know, now Biden says only, only defensive weapons now, not offensive weapons, which is like, doesn't mean anything. And now Biden, amid the whole Russia thing, is going to get on a plane and go go get on his knees and, and suck the dick of the Saudi king, uh, you know, to beg him to pump more oil to drive the price down. Now, if you want to talk about some hypocrisy, I mean, this is just the height of utter hypocrisy. If Russia is bad for what they're doing in Ukraine, which they're not, which I've explained many, many times, but if, if you're going to condemn what Russia does in Ukraine, you have to condemn what the Saudis are doing in Yemen. I mean, the whole world is seeing exactly what the Saudis are doing in Yemen. And the U.S. government is knee deep in it. And it is selling the weapons. It's supplying the weapons to do it. Um, and, it's, and it's advising them. And it's it, unbelievable. So, I mean, if you think that there's any any moral legitimacy to what U.S. leaders are doing with all of this, you have no clue what you're talking about, because it's just unbelievable. I mean, it's just utterly unbelievable what they're doing. And nobody is talking about it. Right. It, I mean, it's just and in fact, all the talk that we're hearing, all the criticism of Biden is not that he's about to go, you know, bow before a king who cuts people's heads off, one of the only countries in the world to still have beheading as a form of public execution. Saudi Arabia is a giant slave plantation. You know, one in four people in Saudi Arabia is a guest worker slave. They have no rights, right? They have these courts where if you break the law, they cut your head off. Um, you know, Saudi Arabia is a brutal authoritarian society. Um, you know, they treat the, the Shia Muslims uh, like second class citizens. They're not allowed to. They have segregated schools. They're only allowed to work in, uh, in in jobs that involve manual labor. Every so often they execute one of the Shia, the Shia imams or religious leaders or ayatollahs or whatever. They just execute them just to just to just stick it to the Saudi, the Shia Muslims. Even within Saudi Arabia, the Shia Muslims are second class citizens. And on top of that, since 2015, Saudi Arabia has been bombing and killing and murdering murdering the people of of Yemen. And while with that going on, uh, you know, it's totally okay for Joe Biden to go over there and beg them for more oil, et cetera. Totally fine. Um, totally fine. But, you know, we got to just, you know, cut off Russia because Ukraine, you know, as if as if the Ukraine stuff just came out of nowhere. This is how ridiculous and and one sided U.S. media is. Uh, it is it is the height of hypocrisy. Uh, I'm sorry if you know anything about Saudi Arabia, you would know the moral implications of buying oil from Saudi Arabia are 
far higher than the moral implications of buying oil from Russia. You can talk about corruption in Russia. You can say you're outraged about Ukraine. A lot of that's been debunked. But the Saudis are indefensible, right? The Saudis are utterly indefensible. If any country that deserves to be driven off the markets for human rights violations, for attacks on its neighbors, it's Saudi Arabia. I mean, during the Arab Spring in 2011, Saudi Arabia invaded Bahrain and installed a, a dictator back on the throne after the people of Bahrain rose up and overthrew the dictator king, the puppet king. The, you know, then the Saudis invaded Bahrain and killed a bunch of people. Executions. They have ma they're setting records right now in Saudi Arabia for public beheadings, chopping people's heads off. They are breaking records. They're doing like 80 a day. I mean, it's unbelievable what they're doing right now, but that's totally okay to buy. Totally okay to buy, buy oil from them. Totally fine. Totally fine to buy oil from them. Totally fine to sell them only defensive weapons, which is ridiculous, right? Um, totally, totally fine. Um, totally fine. Totally, totally fine. Um, but, you know, Russia is just so bad, and that's why we've got to endure these high gas prices. I mean, if you want to talk about hypocrisy, that's hypocrisy. Um, and, and, and I mean, we need to we need to expose this. Uh, Nobody is talking about this. And it, the only criticism I'm hearing of Biden is that he's too hard on the Saudis. Right. That's what Mike Pompeo uh, is saying, that he's alienated Saudi Arabia. We've, we've not respected the Saudis well enough. Treating them as a pariah state is no good. Mike Pompeo and the Republicans are saying that that Biden doesn't suck enough Saudi dick. He's not he's not bowing before the Saudis enough. Uh, that's the criticism we're getting is that, uh, you know, we need to bow and, and coddle the Saudi autocracy even more. That's the narrative that we're getting is that, uh, I mean, it, it's really, really, really ridiculous, really ridiculous. Um, the, the hypocrisy in all of this. So, uh, I mean, I, I'm just, I mean, it's like, we're supposed to all hate Russia because of Ukraine and Saudi Arabia, yeah, Saudi Arabia. I mean, Russia, Russia doesn't even have the death penalty at this point. I mean, they technically have it, but it's been on a moratorium for like two decades. So they haven't executed anybody in all that time, uh, you know, but uh, but the Saudis are chopping people's heads off and bombing Yemen and, and you know, and, and we're OK with that. Right. Uh, and, and it's supposed to be this big moral thing. I mean, it just shows you how ridiculously selective U.S. media 